Disability Rights Florida, What is CAP? Presented by Janelle Vasquez, Howard Bell, Allison Klein, Victor Panoff, and Felicia Jordan. I'm Allison Klein, Senior Advocate Investigator. Disability Rights Florida was founded in 1977 as the statewide designated protection and advocacy system for individuals with disabilities in the state of Florida. Disability Rights Florida is a not-for-profit corporation that has authority and responsibility under eight federal grants. Our services are free and confidential. Funding, responsibility, and authority under eight federal programs, CAP, PAD, PAMI, PAIR, PAT, PABS, PATB, and PAVA, are to protect the rights of Floridians with disabilities. We are not-for-profit corporations since 1987. We have offices in Tallahassee, Tampa, Hollywood, and Gainesville, satellite offices in several other communities. Our mission is to advance the quality of life, dignity, equality, self-determination, and freedom of choice of persons with disabilities through collaboration, education, advocacy, as well as legal and legislative strategies. Our priorities include abuse, neglect, or rights violations for individuals who live in institutional and residential settings, community placement, access to publicly funded benefits and services, particularly home and community-based services, equal access to public and private programs and services, including businesses, transportation, post-secondary education, housing, and assistive technology access to vocational rehabilitation and blind services, access to a free and appropriate public education in the most inclusive environment. The services to individuals that we offer are information and referrals, self-advocacy support, technical assistance, investigations into complaints of abuse, neglect, and rights violations, advocacy services, dispute resolution support, negotiation and mediation support, and legal representation. I'm Howard Bell, Senior Advocate Investigator. What is CAP? The purpose of the Client Assistance Program is to advise and inform applicants and individuals eligible for services and benefits under the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, as amended by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, and Title I of the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990, including students with disabilities under Section 113 and individuals with disabilities employed at subminimum wage under Section 511 of the Rehabilitation Act. In addition, applicants and eligible individuals may be provided advocacy and representation to ensure their rights in their relationship with projects, programs, and services to protect their rights provided under the Rehabilitation Act. In addition to providing assistance and advocacy under the Rehabilitation Act, a CAP agency may provide information on the assistance and benefits on Title I of the ADA, especially those who have traditionally been unserved or underserved by the Vocational Rehabilitation Program with respect to services that are directly related to facilitating the employment for applicants and eligible individuals. What does CAP provide? CAP assists those who are seeking services available under the Rehabilitation Act. Disability Rights Florida administers the CAP, or the Client Assistance Program, in a manner that empowers people with disabilities to fully understand and exercise their rights to services. CAP strives to assure that people with disabilities are allowed to make informed choices throughout the vocational rehabilitation and independent living processes and are treated with dignity and respect. The CAP can help by providing information on the services available, including the timeframes for these services, and by explaining the federal regulations and state rules. When there is a difference of opinion in any aspect of service delivery between the consumer and VR, CAP can get directly involved. CAP is required to resolve disagreements using informal methods to the maximum extent possible 
before resorting to administrative or legal remedies. Examples of CAP activities include providing support and assistance to consumers so they may advocate for themselves, providing information and referral to other programs and resources, reviewing case records and talking with counselors on behalf of our clients, supervisors, community rehabilitation providers, and others involved in the VR case, helping to develop strategies to resolve disagreements through negotiation, representing clients at administrative reviews, mediation, or fair hearing, and providing information on Title I of the Americans with Disabilities Act. How do we provide services to our clients? We can address complaints regarding denied access to vocational rehabilitation services. This could include negotiations, representation at appeals, explanation of DVR, DBS policies, and rights and responsibilities of the client. We can assist in obtaining a reasonable accommodation in the workplace. This could be through assistance of DVR, DBS, or directly through the employer. We can also refer to the EEOC or FCHR. We can address systemic issues to increase access to assistive technology and worksite modifications. How we work together with DVR, DBS. CAP advocates can complete supervised referrals to DVR DBS. DVR DBS can speak to a CAP DRF advocate without a release. A release must be obtained in order to receive records. DVR DBS staff can work with CAP DRF advocates by negotiating to attain a mutually agreed upon service, outcome, employment goal. We can request a reconsideration to the unit supervisor when there is supportive documentation. We can attend meetings with the client and DVR DBS staff acting as a go-between in order to make sure there is an understanding and agreement by both parties. We can make recommendations for additional evaluations if they could benefit the client. CAP is mandated to have a representative on the Florida Rehabilitation Council and on the DBS Rehabilitation Council. Hello, my name is Victor Panoff, and I'm a senior advocate. I'm here to talk about the Protection and Advocacy for Beneficiaries of Social Security, PABS, program. PABS was created under the Ticket to Work Work Incentives Improvement Act. Disability Rights Florida provides services to eligible beneficiaries under PABS program. PABS eligibility. To be eligible for the PABS program, an individual has to be age 16 through full retirement age, has to be a disabled beneficiary who may need assistance to secure, maintain, or regain employment. Disabled beneficiaries who receive cash SSI or SSDI benefits are eligible. Former cash beneficiaries who receive continued Medicaid under 1619B provisions or who receive continued Medicare under the extended Medicaid provisions are also eligible. PAB services include investigation of complaints of improper or inadequate services provided to beneficiaries by service providers, employers, employment networks, or other entities involved in the beneficiary's return to work. PABS provides advocacy, technical assistance, information referral to beneficiaries about work incentives and employment. PABS provides consultation to and legal representation on behalf of beneficiaries to protect their rights and assist beneficiaries in disputes with SSA-appointed representative payees. PABS also assists beneficiaries in disputes before the Social Security Administration involving work-related program decisions and benefits, including overpayments that are clearly a barrier to employment. PABS also provides information and technical assistance on work incentives to governmental agencies, employment networks, and other service providers and advocacy organizations. When talking about providing PAB services, 
I should clarify that Disability Rights Florida does not provide case management services such as benefits counseling and emphasize that we assist with Social Security when there are disputes, typically with work-related program decisions. The WIPA program is a separate program outside of Disability Rights Florida, which was created under the Ticket to Work Work Incentives Improvement Act to provide benefits planning and assistance services to beneficiaries. The WIPA program has priorities for services. Priority Group 1 is individuals who are currently working or engaging in self-employment and have both a need for and interest in receiving individualized work incentives, planning, and assistance services. Priority Group 2 are beneficiaries who are actively pursuing employment or self-employment and who are interested in receiving work-related benefits counseling. This group includes beneficiaries with a clear employment goal who are conducting active and regular job search. It includes beneficiaries with a clear employment goal who have taken active steps to prepare for achieving that goal. Beneficiaries who have taken active steps to prepare for employment or self-employment would include individuals who have an approved past plan, are participating in an education or training program related to employment goal, have a ticket assigned with the State Vocational Rehabilitation Agency or Employment Network with a signed individual work plan, and are actively engaged in services stipulated in the plan, are participating in a work-study program on-the-job training opportunity, apprenticeship, paid or unpaid internship, or other job preparation program. The low-priority group for WIPA services does not meet the criteria for priority group one or two and receives basic information and referral services only. Social Security considers transition age youth 14 years old through 25 years old a separate high priority category for WIPA services. All transition age youth should be enrolled in WIPA and provided with individualized WIPA services regardless of where the person is on the employment continuum. For individuals who may fall outside the WIPA priorities, the Florida Division of Vocational Rehabilitation can provide benefits planning assistance for DVR customers beginning in the plan development status. Greetings. I'm Z. Felicia Jordan, CAP Attorney. What is WIOA? The Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act is otherwise known as WIOA, and it was signed into law by President Obama on July 22, 2014. It became effective in July 1, 2015, and is addressed in 34 CFR Part 361 on Vocation Rehabilitation Programs Regulations, as well as 34 CFR Part 370, which is the Client Assistance Programs Regulations. It deals with pre-employment and transition services, otherwise known as pre-ETS, and it increases services to youth. It emphasizes the need for youth with disabilities to have more opportunities to practice and improve workplace skills, consider career interests, and get real work experiences. It expands education and training options to help participants access good jobs and advanced careers. It helps disadvantaged individuals and unemployed youth earn while they learn and aligns planning and accountability across core programs. Who are the pre-employment youth? Youth with a disability, which is considered under 34 CFR 36.5 C section 59. These are individuals with a disability who are of ages between 14 and 24 years old and eligible for VR services that are no more potentially eligible is a larger group than students with disabilities. Under WIOA, 15% of each state's public DVR slash DBS funds must now be used for pre-employment transition services. This is in addition to transition services which have been retained by DVR DBS. And for students, the employment may be a projected 
post-school outcome. Under Section 723 of WIOA and Section 103 of the Rehabilitation Act, VR services to individuals is at the inclusion of customized employment. It encourages individuals to pursue careers in advanced training, such as science, technology, engineering, mathematics, including computer science, medicine, law, or business. And it extends services to youth who are receiving supported employment services. WIOA and Sheltered Workshops. Section 511 of the Rehabilitation Acts regarding limitations on the use of minimum wage. Before working at a rate below minimum wage, youth with disabilities must receive pre-employment transition services referred to DVR slash DBS for services and receive career counseling. DVR slash DBS must review individuals employed in a non-integrated settings semi-annually and report the information about those individuals in extended employment to the Wage and Hour Division at the Department of Labor. Congressional intent for WIOA. It increases the focus on serving the most vulnerable workers, low-income adults, and youth who have limited skills. It focuses on increasing job skills, career pathways, and in-demand occupations. It focuses also on more employment engagement and requires public DVR slash DVS and the workforce development to be better partners. Highlights of WIOA. It is about implementing strategies to help the worker and the job seeker to achieve their full potential. Recognizing that the needs of the businesses and the workers that drive our workforce solution. Workforce systems support strong regional economies and play an active role in community and economic development. It mandates enhanced coordination, collaboration, and strategic planning through a unified state plan. How do we accomplish this? Well, we increase services to youth and we emphasize the need for youth with disabilities to have more opportunities to practice and improve workplace skills, consider career interests, and get real work experiences. It expands education and career training options to help participants access good jobs and advanced careers. And we help disadvantaged and unemployed youth individuals earn while they learn and aligns the planning and accountability across core programs. Hello, my name is Janiel Vasquez and I am an advocate with the Client Assistance Program. Disability Rights Florida, Transition Options and Resources. Transition School to Work. By age 16, students covered by IDEA are required to have a further plan as they grow into their late teens. In Florida, we start the process at age 14 and develop a Transition Individualized Education Plan, TIEP. The TIEP is designed to be a result-oriented process that focuses on improving academic and functional achievement to facilitate the student's movement from school to post-school activities, including post-secondary education, vocational education, integrated employment, including supported employment, continuing and adult education, adult services, independent living, or community participation. What should each transition plan cover? Each transition plan should cover the youth's goals and all the supports and services that the young person with a disability will need to prepare for the fullest possible life as an adult. A transition plan looks ahead to the needs, changes, and possibilities of adulthood. An IPE or employment plan focuses on preparing for work as an adult. If the education system, vocational rehabilitation agencies, and private and government social services can provide a service or support and the person covered by the plan needs it, the plan should show the way to get it. WIOA and DVR DBS's role in transition. DVR and DBS should participate actively throughout the transition planning process, not just when the student is nearing graduation. DVR and DBS is expected to provide services to at least some students with disabilities while they are still in school. 
When transition services are provided by DVR DBS, as with any other VR service, they must be designed to promote or facilitate the achievement of the employment outcome identified in the student's IPE. WIOA and Pre-Employment Transition Services Pre-Employment Transition Services include Job Exploration Counseling Work-Based Learning Experiences, which may include in-school or after-school opportunities or experience outside the traditional school setting, including internships, that is provided in an integrated environment to the maximum extent possible, counseling on opportunities for enrollment in comprehensive transition or post-secondary educational programs at institutions of higher education, workplace readiness training to develop social skills and independent living, and instruction in self-advocacy, which may include peer mentoring. WIOA and Pre-Employment Transition Services Continued Workplace readiness training, social skills, independent living skills, self-advocacy skills, person-centered planning, peer mentoring with people with disabilities who are working in competitive, integrated environments. DVR, DBS's Responsibilities, Coordination of Pre-Employment Transition Activities. According to 34 CFR 361.48A4-1, attending individualized education program meetings for students with disabilities when invited. Two, working with the local workforce development boards, one-stop centers, and employers to develop work opportunities for students with disabilities, including internships, summer employment, and other employment opportunities available throughout the school year, and apprenticeships. Three, Working with the schools, including those carrying out activities under Section 614D of the IDEA to coordinate and ensure the provision of pre-employment transition services under this section. And four, when invited, attending person-centered planning meetings for individuals receiving Social Security benefits. What is CAP was brought to you by Disability Rights Florida. Our address is 2473 Care Drive, Suite 200, Tallahassee, Florida, 32308. You can call us at 1-800-342-0823 or via TDD at 1-800-346-4127. Visit our website at www.disabilityrightsflorida.org.